the next stage of our webinar, which is we'll be discussing data lineage here, um, kind of going off of what Sean discussed uh, earlier around data quality. He showed you a little glimpse of data lineage where he showed the deprecation of um, of data when it's when the data sets deprecated a table, for example, it, could sh it shows a lineage of where it's going to affect it throughout the your whole data pipeline. So that's a little bit of a, a sample of data lineage. And with that, we're going to pop right into what is data lineage, um, why why we need data lineage, its impact, and then Sean's going to go through a short demo on data lineage within Alation and how that can enable you to improve your program and your data as you move forward. Um, so a little bit about data lineage. So I think. Um, uh, it's a little bit self-explanatory, right? Lineage is is about um, uh, the connection of uh, an object to um, through time, in essence, or how it's connected to other objects um, through time. And this can you can use that pretty much in a lot of different subjects. But in terms of data, we're really looking at uh, how data moves through a data pipeline within an organization. So how it moves, uh, how data moves from say one application, how it's ingested and it moves into each of the process and steps that it might go through in an organization. So a classical way of looking at of in most organization, they, something gets ingested into a source application and moves through some ETL process and moves to a data warehouse, an example, another ETL process may occur, and then it re reports, uh, moves into a reporting layer. So that that's kind of a, a classical way of looking at uh, data in, uh, data pipeline obviously they, they can get much more complex than that especially now that we we have different uh, different data architectures um everything from soa to microservices uh through now data product um, architectures so that obviously could get more complex but you get the idea um the lineage is how that data moves throughout that pipeline um so what is also what is that what does data lineage support? So we understand that data lineage is about how it moves through an organization. So why understanding that is important to to the business? So because one, it it can support the trust of the data. So this goes back to a little bit of data quality. So if you know where the data went through and you know that certain changes occurred in certain areas and you only know that through lineage, um, then you can understand, okay, why did it a change occur? So it gives you that ability to go back and see that. So a lot of audits um, in, in this example, our Sarbanes-Oxley is it's very important to for Sarbanes-Oxley reporting. Um, that provenance allows us to understand that. Um, also, users can see where the data came from and why and how and who modified that data for. For example, so if they understand if the data has been modified and they're going to use it in its modified form, they're going to want to know, OK, why was this modification occurred? Well, what was the reason? Understanding that context can uh, assist that uh, the next user to know, OK, I see why this happened and I can use the data in this way, or they might have to go back to the original source if, if that's something they need to do. Um, but only lineage will tell them, you know, where those changes, the modifications may have occurred. So also the other area where is where it's important is in the impact analysis. You know, when you follow that, uh, the uh, the whole data lineage, it tells you uh, the impacts along that whole pipeline. So what exactly how how it affects each of those areas. And I think I mentioned ETL routines, uh, the the queries that may occur about that data throughout a pipeline, the dashboards or the reporting that occurs at the end. So all these are areas that data lineage can address. So we just we just refer to data impact analysis report. So the downstream effects of what occurs when you make a change to the data is something that within Alation uh, you can see very clearly. We saw a sample of it. We're going to see more here very shortly, but. Um, when you look at the impact analysis report within Alation, it, it tells you everything downstream of what's going to happen if you make a change here to all the downstream objects. Um, you can you can also report on um, based upon the BI reports as well as how the data flows in columns, where there there where there is lineage metadata in Alation. So uh, the, on the reporting side, you're able to see those flows uh, through the columns through lineage metadata, so that it can assist you in your analysis. It can assist you when you um, uh, in terms of okay, if you're selecting certain object types, how that's going to look, um, and also the different steps. So these are some of the areas that uh, an impact analysis report can assist you on. Um, obviously, it has other other um, areas that it addresses. This can also help you in terms of understanding uh, you know, quality. Uh, is is a one afterthought on that. Is an impact analysis can help you there as well. Um, also understand ownership, um, who the different owners may be throughout, and then 
kind of address your uh, those owners or stewards based upon that. So those are some of the side aspects. Now, with that said, we are going to move right to the demo and I'm going to turn it over back to Sean here, who is going to jump us to the to our demo. Oops, it's not what I uh, wanted to see. Here we go. Great, thanks. Sean, Salvador. take it away. Yep. Thanks. All right, so <clears throat> data lineage. Uh, goal here is just to show you kind of what this looks like in the Alation environment. Uh, as Salvador pointed out, definitely something that is always a top feature anytime someone is looking to acquire a, a data catalog. Um, we all are, are we're all uh, some people learn in different ways. Visualization is definitely one of those key ways that kind of helps things sink in. So seeing the path of the journey of the data from from source to target is always going to be helpful to really pinpoint uh, certain um, certain certain bottlenecks or any errors that come up along the way, or just to get a general sense of where where the source is that you're looking at for the end dashboard, right? So when I browse to a particular table, we're coming back to our channel views table here. Uh, you'll see one of the tabs along the way here is going to be our lineage tab. Uh, out of the box, this is going to be something that most likely is going to be uh, just kind of grayed out, right? It's not going to be available there. You are going to just ha you are going to have to make sure that you run a, a query log ingestion across uh, against your data sources to be able to pull in that needed information for Alation to read through and be able to start to map out that lineage, right? It's going to start to pick up on a lot of the all of those queries to know uh, what it's being pulled against uh, and with and joined with and all of that stuff. Um, so that can properly map out that visualization for you. So let me switch over to the lineage tab here. And uh, you can see right away we've got uh, we've actually got two sections here. So this top section is probably what your eyes are drawn to first. Um, you have the ability to zoom out here a little bit, depending on how in depth this lineage view is and, and how wide it gets. Uh, but you can see we're looking at front and center here is our channels view table. And you can see both what's upstream and downstream from this particular table and everything that's that it's connected to. Uh, in this case, we do have the ability to use this drop down arrow to take a quick glance at the columns that are involved in there. And you would also see the lineage view uh, throughout the, the lineage, the, the path of the columns as well, if you were interested in that. Uh, one cool feature that I think is cool, and this is speaks to the, the below the fold uh, portion of the page that seems a little bit empty right now. But if I wanted to click into um, another page, I can click on this uh, data source object here, which is downstream from our channels view and actually get a quick snapshot on that data object page itself, which at the moment looks like it's pretty basic. There's not a whole lot of stuff going on in here, but if I wanted to quickly get a glance at the description or any of the other uh, maybe custom fields or labels that have been applied to that object, it's a, it's really cool that Alation has built that out in here so you don't actually have to jump to that page unless you really wanted to, but you can all take a look at that um, within the same page here. Now, in this particular example, if you were following our previous section here around data quality, right? I had talked about the, the trust check flags. And in this particular case, right, we we have a deprecation. It looks like this particular case, we've got this table is actually out of sync for some reason. So that has been deprecated for the moment to. Uh, not just warn users, but actually avoid, uh, prevent, or to guide users away from using this table, at least for this uh, period of time until this gets fixed. And so automatically, once you deprecate this, Alation is going to go downstream and actually highlight all of those objects in red as well. So that if anybody was browsing to this particular page, which I'll jump to here, Right. This is a this is now the next table down or this is a view coming off off of this table. Right. If I were to come to this page, right, I'm not going to have a deprecation feature here, but what's going to actually populate automatically is we're going to get a warning now. And if I open up this, uh, the trust check flags, I get a little bit more uh, information. I'm going to see a message here that says warning propagated from the deprecation of and here's our channels view table. So that's going to be a, a huge feature. Um, that any user now uh, they don't even have to know that this or they don't have to be even in 
the path of finding the channel's views. This might not be something that they're even looking for. They might be just looking for some sort of dashboard down the down the stream. But by heading to any of those dashboards or further views or further tables, um, they're going to intersect with and see that same warning message that we saw for this this view. They're going to see that on any other pages. So it's going to be really helpful. Um, and for those users, right, as they come to the lineage, they're going to be able to backtrack and reverse engineer and look further upstream to figure out, OK, well, where did this step? Where did this warning come from? How far upstream is it? Um, and where exactly is that source? And so anyone that uh, perhaps came across that might be maybe the owner of one of these views or dashboards, they actually can find out the source themselves, come to that page and actually maybe even alert the the stewards that are involved on that if those stewards aren't already up, uh, acting upon this particular error message itself or deprecated message itself. So in terms of the process of um, being notified on any any problems with your data sources, um, as well as starting the process of collaboration or getting started on fixing those problems. Uh, the lineage view is going to be very helpful in uncovering that for you um, as uh, and, uh, and also that notification process. And then the couple other things I just wanted to point out here. I know Salvador had a slide that had a screenshot of it, but um, another view instead of the visual lineage view, you can actually have the ability to look at the view impact analysis. Um, what you actually can, uh, depending on how large this lineage view is and how many objects are tied to it, you actually might want to kind of filter out some of the some some of those objects and just filter that down to a list that's a little bit more bite sized or digestible in that moment. Uh, and the other thing is you can actually export this uh, to a CSV and perhaps maybe use that as a, an attachment in an email that you want to send out to someone or for whatever purposes you need. Uh, and it's a similar thing with the view upstream audit, same concept here. It's just going to provide you a list of all those objects upstream. Same uh, ability here for you to filter based on who the steward is, the object type. Uh, maybe you just want to limit to it on how how up, how far upstream or downstream um, what objects you want to include. Uh, all of that is kind of at your disposal there. And again, you can export that to a CSV and um, and take that from there and use that to your advantage. So that's pretty much all uh, there is to cover here for lineage at this time, but um, it is for the most part, it's pretty straightforward, but can be very powerful and effective um, as you start to ingest all those query logs. Your lineage is going to get uh, become a lot more valuable and uh, you're going to be able to see everything you need to do from that for that data source from start to end. Uh, Salvador, that's what I got. I'll send it back to you. Thank you, Sean.